Good morning. It is February the 9th. I've had about seven hours sleep since I got home. I've woken up. I haven't even had a coffee yet. I had a bottle of water. I'm trying to avoid coffee today. I had so much coffee yesterday that my system could probably use a break. At any rate, because I do that nasty thing called smoking, I'm off to the store to get some of those. And I'm also going to go check out tires today, see about getting a new set put on the truck. I've gotten 60000 out of this set, which is pretty good for these tires. I'm going to go check out some auctions today. So I'm going to go swing by Big O and see what's going on there. Decided that I'm going to go ahead and spend the money and put the tires on the truck because I don't think I'm going to get out of this truck for a while. I really wanted to. I was really hoping to get into a brand new Ram. I would have liked a big horn, you know, something a little more comfortable than this stock tradesman, but it's hard for me to justify going back into a six and a half foot bed truck when I need an eight foot bed truck. It's absolutely what I have to have. I have to rent trailers all the time because I can't fit couches and all that kind of stuff in the back of my truck. So also large bikes are a pain and uh, yeah, it's just time. I'm not going to uh, worry about it too much more. I might, I might look, I might, might look at a GM. We'll see. They're fugly, but I'm gonna just double check some pricing today before I uh, drop a thousand on the tires. So, but I'm kind of running out of not a lot of choice because I have to leave next week and go north. I still have that little trailer I got to take up to Oregon plus other customer stuff. So it's kind of like if it was to happen, it needed to happen tomorrow because I have to go to LA on Tuesday for work and shipments. And that would leave me Wednesday. And then I would have to leave Thursday morning and I'm praying that the weather is going to be good. But I have to leave Thursday morning to head north because I got to make my deliveries on Friday. So... Better do some good online investigation today, I guess. That's probably what I need to do. Uh, there's no dealers open today. But I've already been looking. I cannot find a 2500 crew cab, eight foot box, two wheel drive, gas, ram, anywhere in my area. So of course their search area is only 150 miles, but, uh, and I'm punching in zip codes. Uh, I did find one in Mesa, Arizona. I don't really want to drive that Mesa to pick it up, but even still, it's at it's at 42, and I need to be at about 36 in order to make my trade work because I'm so backwards in this Ram. So, yeah, I think I'm. I think we're gonna probably put another hundred thousand miles on the Ram before uh, I figure out how to get out of it. I've got 92,000 now. All right, let's go get some smokes. So, driving for that long yesterday uh, technically is irresponsible. Um, you know, most people can't obviously do that. There's no question about that. Um, I'm a little more seasoned with it, and I'm a little bit of a different kind of person. I have a tendency to be able to stay awake for 24 hours or more at times without it really affecting me too much you know you do feel tired there's no question about that I'm not one of those drop dead kind of guys you know after 16 hours or whatever it's not an insomnia thing what did it to me was working on the assembly line at GM I used to a lot of work I used to work a lot of double and triple shifts when they were offered during the snowstorms so my body kind of got accustomed to just keep going keep going keep going you know up to 24 hours sure I crashed the next day like today I feel like shit I've had five or six hours sleep and I'm gonna get probably another 12 hours sleep tonight 
and I'm probably gonna feel like crap on Monday. I don't have to go anywhere on Monday. So was pushing it like that worth it? Because I'm gonna be, you know, dragging ass for the next two days. In my case it was because I got to get home. I'm gonna still get out and tinker and do a couple things. Um, but I'm not gonna be like working or whatever, you know. But it's the kind of thing I could grab a coffee now and I could just start driving somewhere else. It's just kind of the way I am. I really what I do really kind of uh, how do you say that? It's not so much what I do is like totally excites me, like it's but it intrigues me and it, yeah, it kind of tickles my brain and I guess it, it, it kind of drives me is what it does. So my <laughs> my driving drives me, uh, but yeah. But I'm on my way up to the Indian Reservation because the cigarettes are cheaper there and then I gotta decide if I, what I'm gonna do on my truck, so. It's just hard because I'm right at the 92,000 mile mark, right? So I'm getting ready to break 100,000 on the truck in 10 months. I'm just like, you know, it's been 10 or 11 months, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. Uh, if I want to just drop it and get into a new one. The problem is, is that honestly, I have to try to carry probably about 25,000 of neg negative equity. How the hell do you carry $25,000 of negative equity into another vehicle? It's next to impossible, you know, not without putting a ton down. And I, I am scheduling for five or $6,000 worth of maintenance on this truck for this year, so that's all I want to put down. You know, I don't want to put $10,000 down, but, you know, because I actually don't have $10,000 to put down. But, so it comes down to, you know, do I try to find five or $6,000, which uh, which I'll, I have this month, and just get into a brand new truck and just go and not have to worry about it for a while again and call it good. But, you know, factory tires, I'm going to get 30000 so that means in three months I'm going to have to drop another 1000 again. So I think I'm going to stick with my Ram because... I really need something with an eight foot bed. And the only half ton with an eight foot bed right now is the Ford Super Cab with an eight foot bed. And my neighbors, they've got one at work. So I'm actually gonna go look look at it on Monday just to kind of check it out to see. Um, uh, just to see what the cab is like on the inside because I rely heavily on this crew cab. And I've told you that in my previous vlog. It's, it's a money maker space. So it's a premium space. So do I give up my interior space for longer bed in a half ton pickup. GM and Dodge do not have any form of a uh, uh, club cab or anything like that with an eight foot bed that's in the half ton. So, and I don't know, I'm still on the flip side about wanting to get a three quarter ton. It's, I don't know if I wanna get that big of a truck. Although, yeah, it would open up a little bit more avenues of uh, revenue for me. But, man, you start getting the three-quarter tons and it gets a little beyond being the guy with a half-ton pickup and just kind of towing a trailer here and there. And uh, I don't know if I want to go through all that hassle right now, so... Okay, so I got my cigarettes. I'm out of them, so I didn't really want. I, I, <laughs> yeah, right. I was thinking about taking today off from smoking. I was like, maybe I'll just have a no smoking today. I'm doing a no coffee day today, so why not do a no cigarette day today? Yeah, I don't need to shock my system that damn bad. See the construction there? I'll probably zoom it in so that you can see. But they're building a brand new hotel on the on Fremont Street. Uh, I forget what was there, but it is no longer there, and now they're building a new one.
uh, we're just I'm just on my way over to Big O now, which is by my place. I'm gonna go in and see the guys and see what I can do about tires and stuff like that. And because uh, I don't even think I want. I mean, it's not that far to go, but I don't even think I want to run down to LA on these tires and back because of the freaking potholes down there. Uh, you know, it's all gonna all it's gonna take is one run across the friggin' ten or the 60 and I'm going to wind up on a friggin' flat tire because some pothole is going to puncture it, that's for sure, but, um, so I should probably get the fresh tires on, that'll be a nice little break-in trip for them before I've got to, uh, head north and put some miles on them, that's for sure, so, I'm pretty fortunate, my brakes are in excellent shape apparently, so I don't have to worry about brakes, so right now, the first, the first planned maintenance for the year is the new set of tires so I'll get that handled I have to look at other things like I've got to look at my serpentine belt and see how that's looking because I do have 92,000 right you're supposed to change those what every 80,000 or whatever they say so uh, I need to have a look at that and maybe change that out or at least carry one in the truck with the tool to change it so if it does you know if it does blow on the side of the highway, at least I can just pull over and pop a new serpentine belt on and, and away I can go. Start looking at the maintenance schedule. I know I've got to do the transmission flush on this. I'm. It's part of the reason why I'm super antsy to get into a brand new truck because while I listen to the dealer's advice, I maybe should not have because everything in the in the book for servicing recommended at 40,000 or 80,000 on an extreme towing uh, to get the transmission done. I did get the rear end fluid done at 40,000, 45,000, whatever, like it, like it was recommended, um, which I'm glad for because I'm breaking a rear end is not going to be fun. So I'm glad that I got that, that part serviced. That cost me a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I let the dealer do it. Um, but they checked my transmission fluid at the time. They actually were able to to, to crack the seal and, and have a look at it, and it was fine. It was not uh, didn't smell burnt. It looked it looked like new, so they told me not to worry about it. And I questioned it again at you know at seventy thousand or whatever, or almost eighty thousand. Then my last oil change, I was really kind of adamant about it, and they were again they were like you know it's a hundred thousand. You know it's early, but you can do it if you want. But they're you know. Even on these ones, even on severe duty, they don't they say a hundred thousand. So I'm afraid that I might have not maintained my transmission correctly, and I'm worried that that's going to cost me a transmission down the road, and that's an expensive repair. The biggest part about it, though, is not not so much the expense of the repair; it's the downtime. Let, let's say I was going up to Eureka and I lost the transmission. You're out in the middle of nowhere, really. I mean, there's a few dealerships out there, but then, you know, um, what are you going to do? It's like you've got to get a transmission done. You know, I guess I could go to Amco and have it rebuilt, but I'm not, I'm never about a rebuild. It's just like, you know, I would just buy from the factory. You know, you just get the, you just get the OEM replacement. It comes with the warranty. If I was on the road and I broke down, I'd be having to leave the truck at a shop to get it done. So, you know, and I'd have to pay the dealer prices at that point because I'm not going to be on the side of the road and I'm going to want the warranty on the new piece. So, uh, obviously it has to be dealer installed at that point. And then I'm looking at a rental to finish the job. I mean, it could just wind up being a really expensive trip, but it's a cost that's going to happen eventually anyhow. So it's just a matter of when. So that's why I was kind of on the on on about getting new um, a brand new truck right now, so that I could really just really get my OCD going about the maintenance schedule, so that I knew that I was doing everything I could to prolong the life of the vehicle because I put a lot of miles on it, and they're hard miles. I mean, you look at what I did. I did that grind with the four solar trailers uh, back and forth to Santa Rosa, and then. I did a run in between to Eureka and then up to Portland and then over to Arizona. I mean, shit, in the last month alone, I put, you know, pro, uh, almost 9,000 miles on because I'm due for an oil change already. That's tomorrow. I got to go in for another oil change. That's why I'm thinking about getting a tranny service done tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, it's just like, 
it's incredible how fast the costs can rack up when you're doing this. That's why you got to make sure you're you're not doing it for nothing, you know. Getting ready to pull into my big O, so let's go in here and see what they say and see what they've got and see what my options are and and all that. Um, I've already checked before. They're they're not big on letting me record in the store, so I'm not gonna try to do that. But uh, I'll come out and talk after and see. They don't look too busy today either, so I might be able to squeeze in, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just having a look underneath here, and I'm not really seeing anything that's evident for the exhaust leak down here. My big O, they let me have a look underneath there. But that is actually next on the mission. It's going to be the transmission filter change. And uh, yeah, the dealer is going to do that one because the actual filter is right there in the pan. That's the filter, so, but, and there's the drain plug, nice. I just got my new Bigfoots put on, my new tires from Big O. So you saw, I just got the new tires put on the truck. So I'm actually ready to go again. I'll be able to hit the road with fresh tires, safe tires. The guys over here at my big O are really good. I like this store. Uh, I've dealt with them quite a bit in the past and they'll continue to get my business. They haven't steered me wrong yet. Because of what I do and the frequency of my purchasing with them, they don't try to nickel and dime me on, on all the other stuff that they have. Every store like this is gonna try to upsell you on different packages that they have. Some people should take advantage of that because if they're not mechanically inclined or don't know what the condition of their vehicle is, then they should look into getting some of those services taken care of. However, in my case, the truck's like still basically new. I know it has 90,000, so it's not new. There's some things I should look at getting done on the truck. It's just not something that's imperative to be taken care of right at this moment. I have, I have more fish to fry with this truck before I start dealing with more of the minor maintenance requirements on it. And those will get tackled, just not today and not on and not on the price tag. The one thing I like about it too is that we were able to get the tires in under what the credit limit is on my Big O credit card. I like using my Big O credit card to purchase the tires because it gives me six months of interest-free payments. And what I do is I set up the payments to automatically come out. And the way I do is by month five, the tires are paid for, so I'm a month ahead of what my schedule is supposed to be. And it just helps to build my credit. And that's the thing with what I do when I'm on the road. And especially in the last year between with what I've made and how I've used the, our credit cards, we have really built up our credit substantially from what it was a year ago. And that's the key thing. You can use a credit card, but make sure that you pay it off. So I always use a credit card when I'm on the road. And then when I get paid from my customers, I just turn around and pay the credit card back off again. So I have a zero balance every month when I'm starting back out on, on the road again. And that's a great way if you want to build credit. If you're in that kind of a situation and you can do it, it's the easiest way to build credit and to get higher and higher credit limits. I'm at the point now where I could like go buy a trailer with my credit card if I wanted to, but the problem is I don't want to pay 30% or 25% interest for a trailer, you know. Although the last time last year before I got my credit so good, they were wanting 20% interest for a loan for five years on a $10,000 trailer. I was like, you guys are smoking crack. I'm not paying that kind of money. I'd rather buy it on the credit card for an extra 5% interest, pay it off in a few months and get all the perks off my credit card versus paying some financial institution, that kind of crazy interest. So there's times where there's just nothing you can do and you have to bite the bullet. The case of this truck got out of my van got into this truck upside down. For what I'm paying for this truck, I could have easily had a, a three quarter ton truck if I didn't have the upside down out of my Pacifica, which I liked that van and I actually do, I did enjoy driving it. It was comfortable and believe it or not, for a minivan, it actually handled and had some power. I was really surprised. But it just didn't fit my business model anymore and I needed to get out of it. 
I found one dealer that was willing to work with me and that's the guys over at Desert 215 and they took care of me. So even the dealer I bought the van from wasn't even helpful in getting me out of it. And there were some issues with it and I was trying to work with Chrysler on it. Uh, in the end, they finally did come back and help me out a little bit. And I probably would have got a better truck than what I have now if I'd had that up front. But it's, it, it, is, it is what it is. And I'm always one that believes in things happen for a reason. The other thing you got to consider is, and you know, this, this will come up in my review of my Ram. I'm going to do a 100,000 mile review. But this truck has not had an issue. It has never had an issue. Knock on, knock on wood. It has never had an issue. It has never had a recall. It has never thrown a code yet in the 92,000 miles I've driven it. Unfortunately, that's kind of saying a lot in today's market. It used to be a time when you bought a vehicle and there was no problems. It was pretty much trouble free with, you know, some rare exceptions once in a while in a model lineup. Unfortunately, nowadays it's a quantity, not quality. Push them out, push them out, get them sold, get them sold. Oh, wait, we got a problem. Okay, bring them back in for a recall. And I don't like that thought of business because for somebody like me who's on the road, you know, and then I'm, I'm an exception. I understand that. I'm not the average consumer by far. I'm far from the average consumer with what I do with my truck. Most business truck owners buy a pickup truck to work it and to work it hard. And the last thing that they need is it sitting in a shop waiting to get repaired or waiting on a recall or waiting for whatever's wrong, like, you know, four months for an eco diesel block. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, thankfully, 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 I didn't get talked into that. I almost did. It was a consideration at the time, but I didn't. And I'm really glad for that. Although, having said that, I have been looking at the new Eco Diesel or the new GM Diesel that's out there. I've been watching. Uh, I've been watching TFL. Yeah, so it's TFL. It is the fast lane. They're on YouTube, but they do a lot of testing with the trucks. They're based out of Colorado, so they actually do like uh, they call it like Ike Gauntlet Challenge. It's they take it up the grade in Colorado by Denver and back down. Interestingly enough, I like to watch what they're doing because it gives me an idea of what the new trucks are getting for gas mileage. Gas mileage is something to consider when you're in this business. Uh, there's towing, obviously, and there's empty because you run empty miles as well. So I like to watch their reviews of that. Their testing method is okay. I just don't think it's actually realistic only because they're doing extreme testing and it's extreme situations. So the way they present it is like that's what you can expect daily, but it's not true. That's really what you could expect in their area or in their type of geography. I get much different numbers on my 19 Ram versus what they tested, and I run up and down the West Coast. So my grades aren't as extreme, and also my air density is much better compared to the mountain air, because you know, mountain air is very dense, and you lose horsepower, and all that kind of stuff, whereas I don't have that closer to sea level. I mean, I can consistently get 19 or 20 miles per gallon empty in my Ram 1500. Okay, enough sitting in the big old parking lot. Let's get on with my day off and, and do what else I need to do. I still gotta go home and shoot some about the old tires. I actually wanna do the tire review. I might even do that today and get that out today. Maybe I'll go home and go back to bed. There we go. All right, let's get out of here. Oh no, but I gotta do intros and stuff like that. I've gotta create that. Maybe I'll work on creating an intro today. I really don't even want to do that. I, see, I don't even remember what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> I'd have to go back and watch my video to know what I was talking about. I'm sure I'm just tired and bitching and complaining and because I'm tired and I'm being probably being a whiny little bitch, but 